In today's tutorial video, we'll be creating a complete Discord bot. We'll be going through the setup process, which acts as an introduction. And afterward, we'll be creating a simple moderation bot, as well as a simple music bot. Before we start, however, I want to remind you to please subscribe to the channel and like the video, as well as check out my other social media, such as Instagram or Twitter, to receive updates on the projects I'm currently working on. We'll be setting up everything we need to create a Discord bot in this video. We'll be going all the way from creating a Discord application to a simple working Discord bot that responds to messages. First step is to make sure you have a Discord server where you can test the bot. So here on Discord, just click this plus sign to add one. I'm not going to do that though because I already have one up here called Bot Tests. The second step is to create a Discord bot application on Discord's developer portal. So here on this website, which I'll link in the description, we need to go to the applications at the top left and then at the top right, click new application. Call it whatever you want, I'll call mine tutorial bot. You can then fill in this info if you want, but after that we need to go to the bot here at the left. And then to the right, we need to add a new bot. Click yes to do it. You can choose to fill in some more information here if you want, but down here just click on administrator to give the bot administrator permissions. Also up here again, where it says token, we're gonna need to use this token later. So make sure to keep this Discord developer portal open in your browser. But for now, here where it says OAuth2, just click it. And then below it, click URL generator. Here in the scopes, we need to click on bot, then scroll down and click on on administrator. What all this will do is it will generate a link down here and we will use this link to connect the bot to the server that we want to put it on. So let's copy this link, open a new tab and then paste it here. Then press enter. You will now need to choose the server you want the bot on. So I'll click select a server and then just choose the server you want to test the bot on. Then click continue, then authorize, then confirm you're a human. After this is done, you can close this tab. And if you quickly go into Discord, you can see that the bot has now joined the server. It's also part of the members list and has a Discord bot tag. The next step is to quickly go back into the developer portal and go back to the bot section. We then need to copy this token here because we'll be using it to send code to this bot so that it knows what actions to perform. Now now it's important for you to know that nobody else is allowed to see this token. Otherwise those who have the token will be able to write their own code for your bot. So just keep this token to yourself. For the sake of the tutorial though I'll be showing mine because I'll be deleting this bot after the tutorial. So just make sure to copy this. The next step is to create a Python project. So make sure that you have Python installed on your computer. I'll also be using Visual Studio Code to write all our code in. If you don't have Python downloaded I have a tutorial for setting all that up here at the top right of the screen or in the description of this video. So let's go to the left here and click create new file then we can call this my discord bot.py. Just make sure not to call this discord.py otherwise we might have conflicts in our code later. Now we need to install some python libraries that we'll be using, specifically the discord library, which will give us access to a really easy way of using the discord API in order to write our discord bot. So we need to open either command prompt if you're on windows or a terminal if you're on mac. But the nice thing with visual studio code is that you can click this here at the bottom left and then here in terminal we can just type pip install discord. If you're using command prompt or a terminal outside of VS code then you can type the exact same command and it should start downloading discord.py. After that's done installing we can go back into our python script and type import discord. Right underneath it we can type token equals and then we can type two quotation marks and paste our token inside of the quotations. We'll be using this token to connect to our bot. We then need to create a client instance by typing discord.client. Make sure that the c here is a capital letter. This client instance will be used to interact with the discord api. Now discord bots work by using events and what these events do is they wait for something to happen in the discord server and once that certain something happens your bot will respond to it this includes your bot waiting for messages being sent waiting for users to join or leave and so much more so for example there's an event that waits for the bot to come online and we can type this event like this at client dot event this at here just means that this is a decorator function right underneath this decorator we'll be using the actual function so just type async def on ready this function needs to be called on ready because it is reserved by discord and so so underneath the function, press tab to get inside of the function, and then we type print. And we'll be printing an f string, so type f and then quotation marks next to it. In the quotation marks, type bot logged in as client dot user. Then here at the start of client, use an open curly bracket, and then here at the end of user, use a closed curly bracket. What this whole piece of code will do is listen and check if the bot is online. And once it is, it will print this into the console. This client dot user will represent the username of our bot. 
Outside of the function, we can type client.run and in the brackets type token. This will run our bot once we run the code. We can now actually run our code and then if we wait and check the terminal, we should eventually see text that says bot logged in as and then the username of your bot, which means your bot is now online. So if we quickly go into Discord, we can see that the bot is indeed online. Back in our code, we can just kill the terminal here. Don't worry if it still says your bot is online on Discord, that's normal. The last thing I want to show you in this tutorial is how to say hi to the bot and then have the bot say hi back. We now need to create another client event exactly as we did up here. So client.event and then underneath here we need to use another function but this one has to be called on message and this event will listen to all messages sent on the server. So whenever someone sends a message on the discord server this function will pick it up. Inside of the brackets you can type msg and this will represent the discord message that the bot has detected. The message will be stored in this msg variable. Now we need to check if the author of the message is not the bot otherwise there's a chance that the bot will detect and respond to its own message thus creating an infinite loop where your bot endlessly replies to itself. So this line of code, if msg.author is not equal to client.user, ensures that the bot doesn't listen to its own messages and only the messages of other users on the Discord server. Underneath it, we can type if starts with, and then inside the brackets here, we need to pass a string of the message that the bot should look for. So usually bots use symbols at the start of the message. So in our case, I'll use a question mark. And then next to this, you need to type the actual command, so I'll just type hi. This whole line of code will check if one of the users on the Discord server has typed hi, and if they have typed hi, then we can reply to them. So once again, underneath this if statement, we can type what should happen if the user has typed hi. So we type await msg.channel Dot send. And then in these brackets here, we type the message that the bot should send to the channel where the user's greeting was originally found. So in my case, I'll use another f string, and in this f string, I'll type hi, and in curly brackets, msg.author.display underscore name. This will say hi to the specific user who said hi to the bot in the first place. If we now run the bot, wait for the login message, and then go back to Discord, we can type question mark hi, and then the bot should respond back to us and say hi, and also use our specific username. We'll be creating a Discord moderation bot in this tutorial. The bot will be able to delete messages containing curse words or links, and will also be able to ban or kick users if they break the rules. We can go ahead and create a list containing all the curse words that we want to block out. Now, these words will need to be strings, meaning they need to be in quotation marks. So the first item in our list, you can really type anything here, but for the sake of the video, I'll be keeping it PG, and I'll be typing PP. And then the second curse word, I'll be typing poo poo. You can add as much as you want here, but I'll only be choosing these two words. The interesting part with this is that we can also use the same method to block links on the server that aren't sent by anyone with a high role on the server. Since each link contains at least HTTP or HTTPS, we can type HTTP colon and then double forward slashes, as well as HTTPS colon again and then double forward slashes again. After this, we can go to the on message event where we'll be listening for incoming messages. This line of code here just checks to see if the user that sent the messages are bought. The reason we have it here is because we don't want the code that we'll be writing under it to run if the message was sent by the bot. Under this we can say for text in block words. This will let us iterate through each of the blocked words and for each one we're going to check if it's inside of the message sent by the user. We'll actually be checking two conditions in this line of code and the first one is if the user is a moderator because I'd prefer that moderators can share links. So for this to work you do need to have a role on your discord server called moderator or you can just change this code a bit so let me show you real quick. If moderator not in str and inside string, we type msg.author.roles. This whole condition will check if the user has moderator role. And if the user doesn't, this will return true. Now, if you have a role on your server, which contain people you trust to send links and not to use curse words, then you need to type the exact role name inside of these quotations here. So for example, on my Discord server here in the roles, we can see that the exact name is moderator with a capital M. And so back in our code, moderator here is spelled exactly the same as it was inside of Discord with a capital letter M and everything. For the next condition, we'll be checking if the user's message contains curse words or a link. We'll type if text in string and inside string message.content Dot lower. This will return true if there are blocked words in the user's message. So I'll be giving you a choice now. If you want to ban the user, you can type await msg.author.ban and this will ban the user. And then underneath here, we'll be typing await msg.delete, which will delete the message. For the sake of this tutorial, however, I will be deleting this message.author.ban line because I still want to test the bot without getting banned. Then right underneath here, we need to type return. The reason is because if we detect a blocked word in a 
message, then the bot will delete the message, but the bot has a chance of still iterating through all the blocked words if the user used more than two blocked terms. But since we now deleted the message, the bot will get an error because it tries to look for more inappropriate words in our message when the message doesn't even exist anymore. So this return keyword will stop this loop once only one of the inappropriate keywords have been detected in the message. Underneath here, outside of the for loop, we can type print, and in the print function, we can type not deleting. I'll just be using this to show you when the bot deletes messages and when it decides not to. After this, we can actually run our bot and wait for it to come online. So once it's online here in Discord, we can start typing our curse words and you'll see that any curse words get deleted. Even if we use more than one curse word, everything gets deleted. So I'll just paste the link here and we can see that this too gets deleted. Now I'll be typing a random message and we can see that the bot says it won't delete the message. I also have a moderator role on this test server. So once I give it to myself and I then try to send a link, the bot won't delete this message and also says so in the terminal. And so we now have a simple Discord moderation bot in today's tutorial video, we'll be creating a Discord music bot that will be able to play music from YouTube and will also be able to pause, resume, and stop the bot entirely. We'll need to download something called FFmpeg first because Discord uses FFmpeg to stream audio. So in Chrome or any other web browser, we need to go to this website, which I'll link in the description. Then you need to click download and then scroll down here and choose the operating system you're using. So since I'm on Windows, I'll hover over Windows and click the first option here. This will take us to another website where we need to scroll down just a tiny bit and then click this ffmpeg full one here. It's the second one from the top. Just click it and it should start downloading. After it's done downloading, I'll drag it to my desktop. This is just to make things a bit easier. When we extract this folder and we then open it afterwards, let's just open it again. And then in here, open the bin folder. You'll see this bin folder contains ffmpeg.exe. This is what our bot will use to stream audio. So in order to use it, you have two options. You can either copy the path to this bin folder containing the exe and then paste it into the program or you can add it to your environment variables inside path. So I'll be choosing to add it to our environment variables. And so the folder containing the bin folder, we can rename it to ffmpeg and then drag it to our desktop outside of the original folder. Once it's here, Type in environment variables, but after E and V, it should pop up. Just click this one here. After that's opened, we need to click our. We're going to need to import some things. So the first one is OS and then also import a sync IO. We're also going to need YouTube DL, but we haven't installed this one yet. So in a command prompt or terminal, in my case, I'll just click this at the bottom left and go to terminal. Type PIP install YouTube DL. This library will handle the streaming of YouTube audio for us. Back in our code, we can create a variable up here that will be storing a dictionary and it will be called voice clients. I'll explain why we need this later on. But for now, we're also going to need to specify the options we want for our YouTube audio. So type ytdl opts for options and then create an empty dictionary. There are many recognized keys that we can use here as options. I'll leave a link in the description to all of them. But for now, I'll just pass one option and it's to get the best audio for our YouTube stream. Under this, we need to create a variable called ytdl and just store an instance of YouTube DL inside of it. This DL object will take our ytdl options as an argument. So just pass it in here. We then need to also specify some ffmpeg options. I'll leave a link again to all of the other available options. But for now, I just want to use this one option where you pass a dash followed by VN. And as far as I'm concerned, this will exclude the video aspect of our YouTube video in our stream so that we only have the audio included. In our on message event, we can then check if a user sends a message that starts with question mark play. And this will be the command people will use to play music. But it's important that the user also enters a space followed by the URL of the video they want to play the audio from. If they don't do that, then don't worry, we'll make our program take it into account by typing try and then under we type accept exception as er and then underneath the exception we can just print the error into the console. This whole piece of code will cause the bot to still run after an error occurred. Inside of the try block we type url 
equals msg.content.split. And then we choose the second element by typing one. This will retrieve the URL in the play message and stored in this variable. We then need to create a voice client instance, which will be returned by this msg.author.voice.channel.connect function. The voice client will handle the voice connection the bot has to a certain channel. Underneath this, we need to store our voice client in our voice client's dictionary that we created earlier. We'll be storing it with the key being the server ID because each server can only have one of this bot that we're currently creating. The entire reason we're storing it in the first place is because we're going to need it later where we create the pause and resume functions. Because for example, let's say you have a bot across multiple servers. This would mean that if we try and pause it, it might pause for all of your bot instances across all of the servers that it's on. But by doing it like this, we now have access to this specific bot that we want to pause or resume in the server that the pause or resume command was sent in. We then need to create an async IO loop and type async IO dot get event loop. This is in a way similar to a thread, but really just means that the function we'll be passing into it will run independently from the rest of the program. So underneath that here, we can type data equals await loop dot run in executor. Then we pass none as the first argument to use the default executor. Then we pass a lambda function where we'll return the value of ytdl dot extract info. And then in here, pass the URL and then download equals false. The reason we're doing this is to get the data from the URL that was in the discord message. We also won't be downloading the actual full audio file from YouTube onto our computer, but we'll be storing the data to that specific song in this data variable. We can then create a variable to reference the song and get the data for that song using the URL keyword. We'll then need to create a player by typing discord.ffmpeg pcm audio, where we'll pass song and then double asterisk ffmpeg options. The double asterisk is so we allow all keyword arguments from our ffmpeg options. There is an optional parameter here called executable. And remember earlier when I said you can choose to add ffmpeg to your path or you can add the path to the exe in your program. This is where you would do that. So in here type executable equals and then as a string the path to your ffmpeg.exe. But since I added mine to the environment variables path I'll be deleting this argument. Under this we can then finally type voice client dot play and pass player to play the requested song. When we now run the bot and go into discord I'll just join a voice channel here real quick and I'll type question mark play followed by the link to the song on YouTube. You can see that after pressing enter the bot joins and starts playing the music we requested which is nice but we still need to add the pause resume and stop features which is actually fairly easy so back in our code inside of the on message event once again we search for another type of message by typing if msg.content.starts with and then question mark pause we'll then create another try and accept block so try and then under it accept exception as er and then we can just print the error in the try block we need to type voice clients msg.guild.id.pause this will pause the bot that was playing music in the server where the message was sent in the first place. Now, the other commands are almost exactly the same, so we can copy this entire block of code and paste it twice. For this first one, we can change the command to resume, and we can change this pause function to resume as well. For this second one, however, we can change this to stop, and then this to stop as well. But it would be better to also disconnect the bot, otherwise we'll get an error if we try to play another song. And this just acts as a quick fix to that problem. So to disconnect the bot, we type await, voice clients msg.guild.id.disconnect. Hi guys, uh, while I was editing this video, I noticed a potential error that might occur. So after some audio has been played with the bot, once you try to play audio again, the bot doesn't work and gets an error. So to make sure that doesn't happen, here in, on, here in our on message event, underneath the play command, we need to just paste, just type this. It's another try and accept block. But this one creates the voice client only if we don't have one already. Meaning that we can actually go ahead and delete this here. Those two lines of code right there. But now we don't have anything in our code called voice client. And so I'm just going to go and copy this. We need a reference to the current voice client. So this is dot play player. So voice client is now represented by this. So now we, to, now we type play and then player. I've tested this, this works. Really sorry for that mistake. Please let me know if you find any others. If we now run our bot, we can request to play a song and once the bot joins, we can type question mark stop to stop the music and make the bot disconnect. We can then just let the bot join again and after it's joined, I'll pause it. And after a short while, we can type question mark resume to resume the audio playing. And we can see that everything worked. That concludes this video. I want to remind you to please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Also follow me on other social media. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.